Mercedes is running out of time to improve its F1 car enough to win a game this season, having watched yet another of its customer teams make the kind of progress that Lewis Hamilton and George Russell can only dream of. After Aston Martin spent most of this season either beating Mercedes or causing serious problems, now McLaren has leapfrogged the former world champion too, at least in the last couple of races. That mid-season surge has caught Mercedes' eye, with Lewis Hamilton saying it's the wake-up call and technical director James Allison admitting the unusual step merits Mercedes playing closer attention to what McLaren's done than it normally would. With more upgrades in the works, can Mercedes replicate the scale of McLaren's improvement, haul itself clear of the yo-yoing fight for P2 and challenge Red Bull? And if not, what can it do to prioritise its 2024 prospects? After some striking visual bodywork changes, a revised floor and modified front suspension in Monaco, Mercedes had a single significant upgrade at the most recent race, the British Grand Prix, the front wing. Mercedes boss Toto Wolff thought the circuit and another upgrade represented the team's best chance of a victory this season, but instead its high speed deficiencies proved too severe. Hamilton did get onto the podium with the help of the safety car, but Mercedes was third best behind Red Bull and McLaren on pure performance. The car still has a rear end deficit to Red Bull through all speed ranges and in Wolf's words remains a handful. He's called it the Diva 2.0, a reference to the W08, the car Mercedes produced when F1 introduced massively different aerodynamic rules in 2017. Mercedes original Diva was capable of being super fast on some tracks and difficult to drive on others. Given the temperamentality, it's no surprise that Wolf has revived the term now. But Hamilton was able to win races and eventually the title in the W08 to continue Mercedes' run of consecutive championships despite fierce opposition from Ferrari that year. The W14 shares the trait of not being an all-rounder, but it's worse. It isn't anything like as successful and isn't in title contention as a result. And failing to be strong at Silverstone, which has been so good to Mercedes in recent years, made Wolf realise how complicated this car still is. Failing to hit the ground running with more upgrades at Silverstone may have disappointed the team boss, but technical director James Allison at least offered a silver lining that relates to the revised front wing and what it's meant to achieve. Changes to the front wing elements were designed to redistribute the front wing wake and improve airflow to the bodywork and floor, complemented by changes to improve the alignment of the end plate and dive plane in a wider range of conditions to clean up the airflow and again improve floor performance. Allison said that the new front wing, which the team is still excited about, is meant to improve the balance and performance of the car through slower speed corners and did what it was expected to do. But that's just not what Silverstone rewards. It's a high speed track with a lot of fast and sometimes even flat out corners and only a few slower parts. In those parts though, Allison reckons Mercedes was decently competitive and described that as a tick in the box for the new front wing. The next race in Hungary, being almost exclusively low and medium speed corners, will be a more relevant test. Mercedes actually performed slightly better than its seasonal average relative to Red Bull at Silverstone, but getting beaten by McLaren yet again was a surprise. A second straight weekend of being outperformed in qualifying and the race by his former team led Hamilton to declare, it's not a blow, it's just a wake up call. McLaren have overtaken us and we need to do more. We've covered that surprising McLaren progress in detail in this video, so check that out if you want to catch up on exactly what's changed on the MCL60 to make it such a sudden podium threat. After Lando Norris had around half of a major multi-stage McLaren upgrade in Austria, both cars had use of that package at Silverstone, with Norris also getting a new front wing as well. While Norris and Oscar Piastri qualified second and third on the grid, Mercedes drivers Russell and Hamilton were only sixth and seventh. It led Hamilton to declare that their progress makes sense if you look at the car, which it turned out was a reference to how similar the MCL60 now looks to the class-leading RB19. That view from Hamilton was supported by Wolf, who said bluntly that the car looks like a Red Bull, and added that you have to take your hat off to McLaren for the performance gains it's found. And maybe Mercedes ended up watching our post Silverstone video to find some pointers too. Every team looks at what others are doing with upgrades to keep an eye on development trends and potentially interesting interpretations of the rules. But Allison has said that McLaren's upgrades merit more attention than usual given the size of its step during the season. New or unusual developments are always particularly noteworthy, and according to Allison, what's interesting and unusual about the McLaren upgrade is how big an instant impact it seems to have had on lap time. Although the underside of the floor remains a mystery, Mercedes is able to see what McLaren has changed with its surface bodywork and to some degree the work around the floor and floor edges. So whether it's massively detailed or not, Mercedes has a rough idea of what McLaren changed and how much it was worth. And in Allison's words, that means it's worth Mercedes paying more attention than it normally might to another team's upgrades to ponder whether it can influence its own development. That said, McLaren's form over the last two races is unlikely to be replicated in Hungary, where its weaknesses in low-speed corners will probably be exposed again. 
There's every reason to think the Mercedes will be the faster car at the Hungaro ring and maybe it will be closer to Red Bull as well. It was, after all, the scene of a Mercedes pole position and double podium last year. Race to race, the competitive picture behind Red Bull will keep changing. And although being consistently at the front of the chasing pack is all Mercedes can realistically target in the short term, it really needs to work out how to break clear of it. The big leaps made by Aston Martin over the winter, and now McLaren even more impressively in season, are still fundamentally a source of motivation and inspiration for Mercedes. It shows what's possible once a team understands and addresses existing weaknesses, regardless of whether those ideas are completely original or good approximations of what Red Bull has pulled off. And if Mercedes made progress even half as grand as its engine customers, then it would be back fighting Red Bull as hard as it was in 2021, which means it can see a realistic route back to the top. Those teams have shown that in this set of regulations, big and quick improvements in form are possible. But being willing to consider other designs is one thing, and replicating a more effective philosophy is a lot easier said than done. Wolf said that Mercedes had bodywork that looked like the Red Bull RB19s in the wind tunnel and that it didn't show a performance gain. In fact, Wolf said that when Mercedes trialed this kind of side pod concept early on this year to see what development avenues it could create, there was a substantial loss of downforce, so Mercedes didn't pursue it. But now the suggestion is that Mercedes might need to revisit it, having seen McLaren find gains that Mercedes seemingly couldn't. Whether that's down to the wrong tools, the wrong methodologies, or even just not being patient enough to persevere with this development path to see a bigger long-term gain even if there was an immediate loss in performance, we can't say. And maybe Mercedes doesn't even know itself. And that might be part of the problem. There are some mitigating circumstances for Mercedes in terms of its development potential. Last year it had a considerably smaller wind tunnel and CFD allowance than both Aston Martin and McLaren and that continued into the first half of this year, although it was slightly pronounced given Mercedes slipped to third in the Constructors' Championship in 2022. And with the cost cap in place, free spending its way to a solution through trial and error isn't an option. It's a reality check to see Aston Martin and McLaren take major steps when Mercedes has been fighting with its car for a year and a half, only chipping away at its performance. And Wolf admits it's difficult to believe that the same kind of transformational change in car behaviour and therefore performance is achievable. That's not just down to wind tunnel time though, that's a difference in understanding and correct decision making. And there still seems to be something missing in Mercedes overall approach to this set of rules that's holding it back. Mercedes is at least optimistic that there is room to progress within this season with further upgrades planned before the W14's development taps are turned off. Wolf has characterised these as only a few small steps, but even finding a couple of attempts could suddenly make Mercedes a consistent second best to Red Bull, and if that happens, then with a better race car than a qualifying car, its race weekend prospects may start to look very different. Some upgrades that Mercedes has planned will benefit next year's car too, but inevitably the development rate will slow down as the focus shifts fully to 2024. Allison describes that as something that will defang all of us a little bit in the race to be second in 2023, as even though everyone will see more potential in their current packages, what's up for grabs now pales in comparison to getting it right for 2024. Mercedes knows that fighting Red Bull for the title isn't happening this year. It would take more than a mid-season surge to do that now. But Hamilton highlighted McLaren's form as a wake-up call for a reason. Mercedes needs to find a way to replicate that kind of progress. It's not about a sudden step forward in 2023 anymore. Every lesson and every decision between now and signing off the key development points on the 2024 car is about saving next season instead.